Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. We have our first bit of casting news from the upcoming live-action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast. It looks as though Emma Watson has officially signed on to play the character of Belle. Now, this isn't necessarily surprising, only because Emma Watson, for about the last year and a half, almost two years now, has been connected to the role of Belle. The difference being, she was connected to the role of Belle in Guillermo del Toro's version of Beauty and the Beast, which I would have been infinitely more curious to see that version. Um, just what he could do with that world, his visionary styles. Um, I am still interested to see what Bill Condon is able to do. Bill Condon is the director of such films as Gods and Monsters. Um, he also has done such movies as King, uh, Kinsey. He did Dreamgirls, which almost reinvigorated uh, Eddie Murphy's career, although he found a way to screw that up. Um, but uh, he also did the last two Twilight films. While well, you, you can't really harp on him for that that was a very good career decision for him um well i i never even saw part one i saw the ending of part two and i didn't care for it um it, it, it was all you know decently directed but i mean it he could only do so much with the material that he was given but i mean even david slade the director of uh you know 30 days of night directed the third part um um Oh, I can't even remember the name. It's Twilight. Anyway, um, he's a very accomplished director, so I am interested to see what he is able to bring to the table with this. Um, this has been a, a long gestating project. Both versions, Guillermo del Toro's version, he ended up deciding he was not going to direct it. He was only going to produce it. Um, and I think with all Guillermo del Toro projects, they all are in development hell for a while. And I think that Emma Watson, she's been wanting to play this role Ever since I think she stated on her Facebook page, I think she's stated ever since she was six, um, she's wanted to play this role, along with a lot of other young, talented actresses. Um, they've all wanted to play that character. Very nuanced character, a lot of different levels and depths to that character. So I mean, it's it's a juicy role for a young actress, definitely. And so you can see why she'd be attracted to it. And her signing on to this, I think, is a great decision. She's a phenomenal young actress. Um, you know, I mean, she was definitely the standout in the Harry Potter franchise ever since the first movie. She always was the one that everybody kind of looked at more so than Daniel Radcliffe or even Rupert Grint. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy with this. The, the big question to me, as soon as I saw that she was cast in this. Okay, so that sets the right, the right age, you know, what, what they're going to do with it. What sort of level of production are they going to go into? Are we going to get a live action adaptation of the animated film or are we going to get just an updated version of the story because the one thing i don't want to see my my main concern with this is the look of the beast and what they do with that because the last couple of iterations of the beauty and the beast story all they've done is they've essentially just given a very very handsome man scars and it doesn't work i mean they almost took that same approach to I, Frankenstein. A movie, well, that is a guilty pleasure of mine. I'm just going to get off on a little thing here. Um, I, Frankenstein, horrible movie. Terrible movie. I enjoy the hell out of it. It, to me, is... I knew what I was getting going in. I knew it was not going to be anything special. I knew it was not going to be even remotely good. Um, but I was hoping for a fun romp. And I figured that that's what I got. My problem with it was... Frankenstein's monster is not an Abercrombie model with a scar on its face. And that's what I don't want to see from Beast. I want to see a hulking monstrosity. I want to see almost a live-action um, photorealistic render of the Beast we got in the animated Disney film back in the 90s. I think that would be... Like, I mean, obviously a little bit more updated, but a beast. Like, have this thing be a monster. Don't have it be a very attractive man with a few scars. Because it's not going to work. You're going to piss off a lot of people. Because I understand the duality of the role. It is meant to be almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type scenario where just the inner darkness of that character is what is at the forefront. And that's what they're trying to convey. But in the animated film, they did that as a hairy monster. And... I think they could still do that because if if the last couple of Disney films have shown us anything, especially the upcoming Cinderella, they're not afraid of doing just literal translations of their animated films into live action. And if we get that, I think this could be a really cool 
experience. I think it could be a really interesting film. Um, she did say that she is excited about being able to dance to um, Be Our Guest and the other song that she sings. Like, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely on board with this. If what they do with the beast, what I would like to see, if they go full monstrosity, if they go with a you know a big hairy thing with big teeth coming out and all that kind of stuff, I want them to do either a combination of prosthetics with CGI enhancement or do full motion capture. Um, I think in this day and age, you can definitely get away with full motion capture. I think if they put enough time and resources into the special effects. They could definitely make it something wholly unique, especially if they get people like Weta on board to do the special effects for it, because those people just know exactly what they're doing when it comes to photorealistic motion capture technology. Um, you know, ILM, while they are fantastic with their CGI, I haven't, and I have to do a little bit more research on this, but I haven't seen a lot of complete motion capture performances done by ILM that are photorealistic outside of, I think, Davy Jones in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in the comment section, let, let me know any other, uh, industrial light and magic productions that have dealt with photorealistic motion capture technology. Um, because I know that Weta has been responsible for all the, the Lord of the Rings. They've been responsible for, uh, the planet of the apes. As far as I'm aware, they did King Kong. Um, and there's a couple others that are just, I'm just drawing a blank on right now. But as far as I know, Weta is the leading company behind that. So if they get on board with this and they do that, I think that'd be cool. But more importantly, who is going to be behind that motion capture? Who is going to be the person in the role? And my personal opinion right now, there's a lot of options where you could go. But if looking at the age of Emma Watson, she's in her early 20s. So they're probably going to go that age group uh, or maybe a little bit older with whoever is going to play the beast. I would like them to be probably in, in the range of late 20s to early 30s. I don't want any older than that because then you kind of gets a little uncomfortable when you become when he turns back into a person. But um, I would love to see Dan Stevens play this role. I think that he has not only the subdued nature of the role where he's very quiet he, and the beast is is very flamboyant he's very out there but there are sequences in the movie and, and in the storyline where he is ha he's having to be reserved he's having to be a little bit more quiet and dan stevens if anybody's seen the guest you know that he can do both he can do really intense he can do almost over the top but he can also do really subdued and really subtle and that's, I think, a trait that the actor playing this role will definitely need. And I think Dan Stevens is the guy to do that. Um, as far as I'm aware, this movie is aiming for a 2016 release, which means that they are going to start production at some point this year, which makes sense. I mean, Bill conan has been attached for a bit now, and now they have their lead lady. We're probably going to start hearing in the next couple of months a lot of other casting announcements. Um, I'm going to be excited who they get to play the voices of... Um, Oh, I'm forgetting the names, but the the, the clock, um, the candle, um, and, you know, Chip and was Mrs. Potts. Um, I, I can't wait to see who they get to play the voices. If they if they keep that aspect of it, which I think they have to, um, but if they keep that, I, this could be really fun. I, I really do, because it was one of the, you know, um, the, the female or, or princess type Disney films that I was, as a guy, really able to get behind as a kid. Um, I felt that this was, especially looking at the beast and, uh, my favorite character obviously was, uh, the candle because he's just so, he's just so funny and charming and he's French. Um, you know, I mean, so everything about that, I'm, I'm excited to see where this project is heading. We're going to get a lot more information in the next couple of months, but definitely in the comment section below, let me know if you guys know any other projects that ILM has done for motion capture, um, where they've done photorealistic motion capture, I should say. And who else you would like to see play the beast? Um, I mean, that's just one that came to my mind. I really think that Dan Stevens really needs a knockout role. I mean, the guest was incredible and he's going to be getting more as, as his career goes on, but... I think that this could be a really interesting, meaty, juicy role for him. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you happy with Emma Watson playing the role of Belle? Um, and who would you like to see the Beast? Let me know in the comment section below. And if we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. It looks as though the troubled production of the remake of The Crow has hit another snag. Um... Actor Luke Evans, who has been in such movies as Furious 6, he was also just recently in Dracula Untold, has unfortunately dropped out of the role of Eric Draven. Now, I, 
Okay, I'm getting a little concerned about this project. I've been concerned for it for a while. I don't think that we need it yet. Um, I think that the original Crow, there's not that much that you could do to it to enhance it. I think it's definitely a product of its time, but it was handled in such a way by the right team that it, it just, it worked. Everything worked with it. And I really personally don't see what you could do differently with it. Um, they've already tried three direct -to DVD sequels. None of them worked. They got incredibly terrible as they went on. Um, but I just don't see where they could go with this. I, I, with the exception of just the relaxations on the rating system, I think is where, because we know it's going to be R-rated. But that's probably where the filmmakers are thinking. They could just push that a little bit further. They could do make it more violent. They could make it have more action. And I don't think it needs that. I think the 1994 film by Alex Proyas really works very well. Even to this day, it still really does hold up. Um, but Luke Evans has been attached to this film for probably a year and a half now, maybe a little bit longer than that. And he recently just, he had to drop out because he couldn't wait any longer. He has other projects and other commitments that he has to go to, um, other projects that he's been wanting to sign on to that he couldn't because this film was looming. It was originally going to start production, I think in either April or May. And, uh, and it looks like it recently hit another snag. So he had to drop out. Um, which is really unfortunate. I like Luke Evans. I think he's a very good actor, even in subpar movies like Dracula Untold, which that movie, I think that movie needed more meat in the script. It was a very generic, very plain story, but it was, I felt that he did a really good job in the role, um, especially, you know, Furious 6 and, and all the other films that he's been in, um, especially the Hobbit franchise. He did really well in that. Um, but let's just go back in history a little bit. Not only was Luke Evans attached to the role, but previously before that, Bradley Cooper was attached to the role. Uh, Mark Wahlberg flirted with it for a little bit. James McAvoy flirted with it for a little bit. And even Tom Hiddleston uh, was approached for the role. But I believe that he just he, he was very interested in it, but I think they decided to go with Luke Evans over Tom Hiddleston. But on top of the actors who have been approached and, and have come on and dropped off, there have been a total of four directors attached to the film. Now, normally it can happen where a director will leave a project, another one will come in and the movie will end up being really good, like American Sniper. Um, American Sniper originally was going to be directed by Steven Spielberg, and it, he then uh, decided that he wasn't going to do it, and within a couple of days, Clint Eastwood signed on to direct it. Um, but Steven Norrington, the director of Blade, was attached to it for a while. Juan Carlos uh, Frenadillo was attached to it. F. Javier Gutierrez was attached for a while. And now Corin Hardy is attached to the film. And he is still the director attached. Um, he has a new movie coming out at Sundance. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it right now. But he was asked, actually, at Sundance about the remake. And he did, he recently said, this was after the news came out that uh, Luke Evans had dropped off. And he says, and I quote, I want to open up the story in a way that The Crow is now part of a world where there are Marvel movies and the Dark Knight movies. I intend it to be incredibly emotional and brutal and all of those things you'd want to see from a Crow film. I want to make a movie that I would have wanted to see as a huge fan of The Crow. I, I, again, I, I mean, I can understand his sentiments and where he's coming from. I just don't see what you could do differently. And maybe that's not their purpose. Maybe that's not what they're looking to do. Um, you know, he did say that he wants it to be new and fresh and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and it take stuff from the graphic novel and the original source material that was not used in the film. That way you could definitely make it fresh. Um, but the main thing is going to be who you get to play the lead role. And out of all the people that have been attached, th these are almost all the guys that I would have wanted to see. And again, this is just at face value. There have been casting decisions out of left field that have worked so well. Um, I think one person, he would be, it would almost be too close of a role, but if he was still alive, I think Heath Ledger would be a definite choice uh, to play this if he was still alive, but that would be too close to the Joker. But uh, Tom Hiddleston, actually, the, a funny story, when he uh, he wanted the role really bad, he actually did his own makeup test and sent that in uh, to them. And I guess they decided just not to go with him for one reason or another. Maybe his stock was too high. Maybe he, it was going to cost too much to get him. I don't know the specific details of that. But if they were like, okay, they're, they're doing this. This is a project, as far as I know right now, it is not completely canned. They are going ahead with this. So with that in mind, if we're getting one, because we're getting one, let's think of, okay, it's coming. What 
can they do to it to make it good? What can they do to get us excited about it? And the things that I came, it has to be gritty. And, and by gritty, I don't mean, you know, like very serious and all that kind of stuff. No, I mean, it has to have this gritty, dirty, grimy feel to it. It has to feel gritty and dirty and just scummy and all the other adjectives. It just, it needs to feel, it needs to feel brutal and just, just unflinching, unrelenting. Like that's the type of feeling that we need to get from this movie. You need to feel his pain and his search for vengeance. And if they can convey that, like they did in the 94 film, then it can, it can work. And we can get a really cool update of this very interesting character. Um, the search is now on for a new actor. I personally, I can't think of anybody else to replace the actors already mentioned. I mean, again, off the top of my head, anybody in that that age age group, um, everybody else is going to start to get just too generic. You're going to get, you know, like Ryan Gosling or, you know, anybody that actually Ryan Gosling wouldn't be too bad of a choice. Um, he'd need to do something with his voice because he has that wispy, whiny, bratty voice. Um as long as he did something like that, then it could work. He needs to get something really deep and dark. Um, one actor who I think could do it really well. Now, again, this is just coming from my experience because I really like him in this role. Uh, and he would have to break away from this role. But um, Jared Padalecki from Supernatural. I think that he, he could bring the intensity. He could bring also that earnestness that he has it, very far back. But you can tell that it's there. Like he... He has a little bit of remorse for what he is doing, but at the end of the day, he knows what he's doing, that he has to do it. And that's his main drive. And so having somebody like Jared in the role, he has the height, he has the physicality, he has the look. I think he could do it. Um, I, I, that's Again, that's just me spitballing because all these other people have decided not to do it for one reason or another. Bradley Cooper was attached for a while. Um, and yeah, th this is basically where we stand. I'm still kind of worried about it only because of the amount of talent that has gone to it and passed. Um, not only actors and A-list talent that has signed on and then stopped, but the directors that have been attached and then pulled away. But more importantly, the length of time that this project has been in development and nothing has gone forward with it. We thought that it was going to start filming in the spring, but that now that's all shot to hell. So that's my main fear about this. I don't know that this is something necessarily that we need, but there is a way to do it and do it right. And if Corn Hardy is able to do that and able to give us this new interpretation of this character using things from the original source material, then I think it could really work. But let me know what you guys think. Who would be a great choice to play the crow? Um, who do you? Th how do you feel about Luke Evans dropping off? Do you think that his um, his reasons for leaving are honest? Or do you think that it's a cover story? Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'd really like to know. And also, who do you think would play the crow? Because, uh, again, to me, Jared Padalecki is one of the main ones that's standing out just because he has the look, he has the physicality, he has the intensity, and he has the voice, I personally think, to really do this role justice. So let me know what you guys think. There is no release date set for this film. Production is was originally scheduled to start in the spring. That's now been pushed until to be determined date. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But if we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. Before we get into our final topic, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update. It looks as though, now it hasn't been confirmed by Marvel, but it looks as though Daniel Bruhl's character in uh, Captain America Civil War is in fact going to be Baron Zemo. Uh, it looks as though it's been reported by a couple of different sites that a leaked casting call came out and showcased that he was in fact playing Baron Zemo. Now, when we do get more information about this, which will probably be within the next day or two, I will update on the next show and I'll talk about this a little bit more on the next show, but I just wanted to give that little bit of an update um, just because it, it looks like that is indeed the fact that he is playing Baron Zemo. So if we do get more information, I will definitely update you guys on here. But let's get into the final topic today. And last week it was reported that James Cameron has decided to delay the upcoming Avatar sequels. Originally slated for release in December 2016, 17, and 18 respectively, they've now pushed them back at least a full year. Now he did say it would be opening up late 2017. I believe that has now been confirmed to be December. He is doing the December release for all of them. Um, so it'll be December 2017, 2018, and 2019 respectively. His reasoning behind it was because the scripts just aren't ready. I am almost convinced 
that I read that same report about nine months ago that they were almost on the scripts that they had about three more or the scripts would be coming in by the end of that month. And that was back in like February or March or somewhere around that time frame. And, you know, eight, seven, eight, nine months later, he comes out and says, oh, by the way, we're still not done the scripts. Okay. You've had an entire writing team of five or six people, including yourself, for over two years now, almost three years, I believe. And you still don't have three scripts together? Um, what? I'm sorry, but that to me, I mean, you have, you have five full-time writers and then yourself, full-time. That means that all they're doing is working on this. And you can't get your scripts together? Now, if the reason behind this was because part of the scripts were that he was trying to come up with new and incredible ideas of planets and all this kind of stuff, and they were having to work out the graphics behind all of that and the technology used to bring that to life, well, that's a different story. That stuff takes invention. You know, that stuff takes time to work all the kinks out. With a script, there are movies that start filming without a finished script, let alone a movie that's going to have almost two plus years of post-production. Most of the stuff's going to be done in the computer. I really don't, I, I don't understand this. This to me doesn't make any sense because, especially considering the fact that Avatar was not known for its great script work. It really wasn't. It, a lot of people, you know, tore it apart because of that. Well, when I was watching it, I thought it looked like Pocahontas meets Fern Gully, but I was more captivated in the world that they created, and that was all done in the computer. That was all done using James Cameron's imagination. It had nothing to do with the scripts. So, if this is in fact the reason behind this delay, you bet your ass that we're going to be expecting one of the greatest films ever made. Because he has been teasing us for so long. These movies have taken way too long to come out compared to um, what they should have. We should have had this, I think it was originally scheduled for December of 2014. Um was when the first Avatar sequel was originally supposed to come out, and then it was 2015, and then it was 2016, now it's 2017. So they've already delayed it three years. They've also added on a fourth film, because originally it was going to be Avatar 2 and 3, then they added on the fourth. This to me just seems like he's going, he now it has the George Lucas syndrome, where he now has nobody to say no to him. He is just moving ahead with whatever he wants. The studio just says, yeah, here you go. Like, the budgets for all three of these movies will take up 25% of the profits that we made from your first film. Um, so, I mean, that could definitely be the case. The movie made almost $2.8 billion, on, including p and I think the reported budget of the movie was 400 and something million dollars, including p and because they had a, almost a $70 million production budget. Um, I think the actual... Or a $70 million marketing budget, sorry. I think their production budget was 280 or $290 million um, for the amount of special effects, the length of time, and also going back four or five years developing the technology. But coming out now, this like these movies needed to already come out. It's We're not going to get the greatest acting because we have Sam Worthington in the lead role. Um, you know, We're not going to get the best line delivery. So well, I don't understand the reasoning behind this. Everybody wants to see Avatar because of the world. If you do a great job creating the world, you're going to make a lot of money for it. But the, the flip side to this is looking at Terminator. Okay, James Cameron did Terminator and then he did Terminator 2 like eight years later. No, seven years later. Um, Terminator came out and it was a great film. Like, it, it, was, it was a pretty good film. Um, no, it was great. It was great. It, yeah, it was great. Terminator 2 comes out, and that is one of the best action films ever made. So, with that thought process, maybe he could be doing the same thing with Avatar 2. Maybe. That is a big, big maybe. I think at this point, the track record the guy has, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But... This is still concerning because the script was not the thing that people wanted from a sequel. They want to go back. I mean, obviously, we'd, we would much appreciate if the script was up to par. Um, but keep delaying and delaying and delaying. All it's doing is driving up your expectations for the film because oh, we're still working on the script. We're, we're getting it to be the best that it can be. Okay. So then when we go to see the movie and we find out that it's not the greatest script, what are you going to say about that? You spent all this time working on it. 
So, I don't know. I just have a little bit of an issue with these comments. I don't think that this is the actual reason, unless he's just, you know, he, he, they're just not actually working on scripts or they're, you know, doing a page one rewrite on some of them or coming up with something that is really cool in part two or part three, but they have to talk about it in part two because they'll have to lead it up. And then that will script something with the continuity of that script. It could be a whole mess because they're writing three separate movies all at once that are going to be one overarching story. So, there's, there is complex stuff that has to go into it. But they should have already had an outline. Like James Cameron already wrote the outline and then he got these people to come in and flesh out the scripts. So I, I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this in, in the comment section below. Do you think that these are legitimate reasons? Do you think that this is exactly what is going on? Um, are you excited about an Avatar sequel? I mean, visually speaking, I'm excited to see where they could go. I know that uh, Cameron has talked at length about wanting to explore the underwater sections of uh, Pandora. So if that's something that we get to see and, and he can do something really cool and unique with that, because one of my favorite Cameron films is The Abyss. So seeing him kind of revisit that kind of territory, I think could be really cool. Um, but only time will tell. We got a lot of time ahead of us now. We got almost three years before we're going to see anything from Avatar sequel, unless he decides to delay it again. If, we get a, if it gets delayed again, I think that's pretty worrisome that there's some issues with this movie. But uh, only time will tell. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click the subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And give us a like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movienewswithnicholson. If you guys ever have a topic or a question you'd like to have discussed on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in our comment section or email us at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, we'll try to get to as many as we can. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.